What's up everybody, Rick Denimir, Holy Moly Outdoors. We're on the water today showing you how to fish a buzz bomb and everything you need to know. So stay tuned with us. All right guys, so there's a lot that goes into it, but it's really simple. Fishing buzz bombs for salmon off the beach can be one of the most fun and enjoyable ways to do it and bring home some tasty fish without having to be a foot in the water. So. I wanted to go through a video today because of kind of the popular demand. I put up a couple videos recently, had a lot of questions, so I want to help you guys get some answers and help you get more fish. So we're diving into buzz bombs and how to fish them for salmon off the beach. And really, we got to first ask the question, well, what is a buzz bomb for those that don't know? I have one rigged in my rod here, but let's take a look at a pile of them and show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, guys, so here is the buzz bomb in all its glory. For those that aren't familiar with it, this is probably what you're going to see at the store, right? It is a two and a half inch. There are other sizes, but these are the main staples for us beach fishermen that work great. This is the three inch with a little bit wider profile, and these are the two and a half inch. My favorites for targeting are beach fishing salmon here in Puget Sound. What's nice about these, in the packaging, you do get a bumper bead and you get a hook. Now, treble hooks in Puget Sound are not the way to go, honestly, and can't do it with the regulation. So, a single barbless siwash hook is going to be your best friend. So, what I like to do as far as colors wise is dependent on the salmon I'm targeting. Pink salmon are going to love pink colors, but don't rule out other odd colors as well. The greens, the metallics, even our UV colors that are coming out here are, are really going to be something that plays very, very well into being different from the people around you. And truly, that will make a difference to getting you more bites. But a simple introduction to what a buzz bomb is, they're usually one color one side and either a glow or white on the back it makes for a fantastic contrast in the water looks like a wounded dying bait fish and salmon cannot say no so quick simple introduction to the buzz bomb let's take a look at how you rig it together all right so really straightforward and simple guys you get the buzz bomb out of the package it has directions which is really nice your line goes through the fat end on the top of this, comes out the skinny end on the bottom. And again, they have a direction line pointed exactly how for you to go about this. Now, I run these on my own individual leader, so I put an extra swivel on top. There's the bumper bead. Get the shadow. There's the bumper bead. Comes in the package. And then, I tie a swivel on the bottom with a siwash hook. Now again, these have to be barbless, so keep that in mind. This is a must-add one-aught. For fun and an extra tip, I add a hoochie skirt for added attraction that sits over the top of that swivel. Really makes it effective. I'm running 10 to 12 pound test on my rod here, um, and which transitions perfectly right into the next step is what gear do you guys need to use to fish a buzz bomb? Frankly, you probably already have it in your garage. So I wanted to show you then what I'd recommend, at least in my preference and opinion, is a simple eight foot six to nine foot six salmon rod. 10 to 20 pound medium action is perfect, but honestly you can get away with fishing trout rods. I don't necessarily recommend it because there's always a chance you could hook a big king salmon here in Puget Sound. So I want something with a little bit of backbone, a 2500 size reel, um, any of your favorite brands. This one's a Daiwa Alexa. I like it for off the river as well, but a perfect saltwater reel. And again, 10 to 12 pound test mainline, run to that little barrel swivel, and then probably another 10 to 12 pound test leader and that helps you really get set up and ready to fish so what is next then for us i'm going to show you how to fish these things so stick around
Okay guys, so you just saw that. We went through a little bit of the brief retrieve, but essentially you're trying to get that jig to flutter up. And then as you give slack line, it flutters back down. But something sneaky, and I will tell you this, don't think that's the only retrieve you have to do. When you reel that buzz bomb straight in, it wiggles and moves just like a spoon as well. I've had a lot of bites where I'm, I didn't cast far enough, let's say, or there's jumpers over in the horizon and I missed them, but yet I speed reel it in. That thing is moving a lot of action and you can still catch fish. So don't forget that. As well as on that retrieve, bring it to your feet. A lot of times these fish run really close to shore and you can get them to chase it to your rod tip. That's half the fun too guys is getting a close strike and really being able to enjoy that. So then next we want to talk about tides, right? I'm currently on an outgoing tide right now. I like personally to have a high tide either the hour before or hour after, right? That's the rule of thumb. And I think it really makes the most sense. The fish are pushed closest to, sh to shore and I have a lot of success during that time. Doesn't mean though, you can't go out and catch fish at other tides. Truly, get out on the water and get fishing. That's gonna give you the most line in the water and the best chance of success is just getting out and being there. But if I had to pick one tide, I would try and be around the high tide or even on the low as the current changes and starts flooding in, you're gonna get fish pushing around. And the thing with pinks, guys, you are going to see the fish. They're going to show themselves. They will jump. So it's pretty easy to start seeing when they're around, not from just the fact others catching them. So they give themselves away, which is very helpful. Uh, after that, you know, we're on the shore, right? But fishing a buzz bomb out of the boat is not out of the question. It's very effective. You can reach those jumping schools. Or let's say you're out in the middle of Puget Sound trolling around and you got three buddies on the boat but only two rods going and there's a huge school of pink salmon that show up next to the boat well have a rod rig with a buzz bomb and you can cast at that school and potentially get a couple more fish i've done it before it is a great great way to do it lastly i know this is going to be a question asked so locations right where do you go to get fish and I have to, you know, refer this one to based upon the areas that are open in your regulations. There's a ton of great beaches around, just like the one I'm staying on today. And you guys can all have success at the right times. Just go read your regulations. Go find at Google Maps. Take a look. That's your best friend, honestly. And go see where you can get out on the water and take off. But guys, really, fishing buzz bombs for salmon is one of my favorite things to do. From the shore i've always been a shore fisherman and i probably always will be it's quick and easy i'm not even wearing waders today and you can do this without getting wet so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you really want to see some more stuff coming check out this video we just released it a little trick to show you how to get more fish on the buzz bomb so again guys everything you need to know fishing buzz bombs for salmon enjoy a little footage here as well fish catching so take care, and as always, tie lines and fish on.